video, we're going to practice naming covalent compounds. We're going to name a compound from the formula, and we're also going to write the formulas from the names. So let's quickly review how to name covalent compounds. Well, once again, we're looking at compounds that have two elements present, and the first element is a non-metal. Now remember, covalent compounds are non-metals. Two non-metals. And when I say non-metals, that means anything that's in groups, let's say 3A to 7A, except for aluminum and, and gallium. Okay, these two are metals. So all of these elements that we have in groups 3A to 7A are going to be considered non-metals for the, for the purpose of naming compounds, right? We're not talking about classifying elements. We're just talking about for the purpose of naming compounds. All right, so for both elements in the compound, you're going to give them a prefix. The first element keeps its name, and you add the prefix. The second element is going to, you're going to drop the ending of the name and add I. So you add prefixes to both the first element and the second element. If the first element, there's only one, you don't add the mono in the name. All right, so yes, so mono is usually Admit, omitted on the first element, okay? Not the second one, but the first one. All right, let's practice one of these together. I'm gonna do the easiest one with you. See, oh, well, you just take the, the element symbol, you find it on the periodic table, and you figure out what it is, but these two are pretty simple. We've got carbon, and notice that because there's only one carbon, we don't put mono in the beginning. And we've got oxygen as our second element. There's one of them, so we say monoxide. We drop the not monoxide, right? This is not correct, All right? So pause the video and take some time to practice the rest of these on your own, and I'll come back and give you the answers. All right, for the first one, we have sulfur and oxygen. We've got one sulfur, so we just give it its name because we don't put mono for the first element. And we have three oxygen, and the prefix for three is tri. So this is sulfur trioxide. Our second compound, we have nitrogen and sulfur. We've got two nitrogen, so we write dinitrogen, and there's only one sulfur, so we drop the ending and add I, sulfide. Here we have, notice that, oh, I'm sorry, monosulfide dinitrogen monosulfide. We tend to usually call it dinitrogen sulfide. You can call it either one. All right, the next, uh, the next problem is we've got phosphorus and bromine. We've got two phosphorus, so we call it di. Di. Notice it's not bi. It's di. Phosphorus. And bromine, we've got four of them. Tetra, not quattra. Tetra, brom, drop the ending and add I. So diphosphorus, tetra bromide. Not quattra bromide. And not biphosphorus, but diphosphorus, tetra bromide. The last one, NO2. We've got a nitrogen and an oxygen. So we're gonna call this nitrogen 
We've got two oxygens, so it's nitrogen di oxide. If we were to have a, so let's say you know that that's nitrogen di dioxide and it's not nitrite because it has, because it does not have a charge. When you see this charge here, you name that as nitrite. But notice there's no charge on this, so this whole compound is nitrogen dioxide. If I was to have a charge here, NO2 minus, then it would be a polyatomic ii, and it would be named nitrite. Okay, let's practice writing the formulas from the name of these compounds. Uh, I'll do methane with you. Methane is one of those compounds that you should recognize just based on its name. Something like um, water, you should know is H2O, right? Uh, ammonia, you should know is NH3. So methane, which you'll learn later, is an organic compound. And uh, it's actually, if I give it the actual chemical name, which I'll give you now, is carbon tetra Hi. Carbon tetrahydride. All right, now we can write the compound. Carbon, the word carbon tells me that I have how many? There's no prefix, so it's just carbon. Uh, tetrahydride, tetra is the prefix for four. Hydride is the name for hydrogen in a compound. So it's H4. Notice that we put the number as a prefix. One more thing to note before you start naming these. If you were to see these somewhere and it wasn't on a slide that says name the following covalent compounds, right? As long as you see these prefixes in the name of the compound, you know that it's a covalent naming system and you don't, and it's two nonmetals. And you're gonna name it that way. And it's named that way, and you can write the formula that way. So let's pause the video. You do the rest of the problems, and I'll come back and give you the answers. Okay, let's take a look at the first one. We've got nitrogen trichloride. Nitrogen simply tells me that I have a nitrogen atom. And because it does not have a prefix, there's no subscript. This is only one. Trichloride. Chloride is the name for chlorine in a compound. But since I have this tri uh, prefix, then that means I'm going to write Cl3. Three is my subscripts that goes along with the tri. The next one, dinitrogen trioxide. Well, I know that I've got nitrogen and I know that I've got oxygen. The di on the nitrogen tells me that I need two of those. And the tri on the oxide shows me I need three of those oxygen. Let's look at the third problem, phosphorus pentafluoride. So I know I've got a phosphorus. I know I've got a fluoride because fluoride is the name of fluorine in a compound. So phosphorus shows me that I don't have a prefix, so it's just phosphorus, but I have pentafluoride. Penta is the prefix for five, so this compound is PF5. The very last one, sulfur dibromide. Let's go ahead and write our element symbols. Sulfur, S for sulfur. Bromide is the name of bromine in a compound. So I'm gonna write the broom, the BR symbol. And I don't, I don't have a prefix for sulfur, so there's no subscript. And I have a prefix for brom, bromide, that's di. So that tells me my subscript is two. Uh, is two. That's really ugly. Let's make it pretty. Okay. 
SBR2, sulfur dibromide. 